Google balance on the internet, you will find something that is about the balance between your personal life and your professional life. Those are important balances, but not the most important balance. The most important balance that I have is that balance that I carry inside with me, my own balance with my own psyche, my own spirit, my own soul. Hi, I'm Gene Maxwell, and my workshop is Balance Works. This is the book, the journaling book that I wrote, Journey Getting Back to You. It contains five steps for getting into balance. This is what you'll get when you attend this workshop. business honoring spirituality and this morning we had an amazing speaker come to us and a web great morning here at BHS and I intend to be back soon happy Thursday morning everyone Settle into our comfortable chair. Breathe in that breath of life. The new morning, the new day. Breathe that in and know that all is in divine, perfect timing. That our lives are blessed. That our relationships are whole and complete. That we are one. And as we step through that portal of change and transition, we pray out to the world our message of peace, hope, love, that we are united, united on all fronts in coping with the COVID virus, bonding even more closely with our friends and family and our four-legged friends that are family. We breathe in that peace and connection, knowing regardless of the circumstances of our lives, that spirit has our back and that we are walking through a threshold of change that we haven't ever seen before, haven't ever experienced, and all those emotions that come up to the surface come up to be healed, to be loved. Those dark places come into the light and dissolve into the nothingness that they are. And we are uplifted in our connection with each other, that spirit knows how to guide every step of our path, and that we love ourselves enough to allow this evolutionary change to change us from the inside out. So I hold this group in high consciousness and in prayer, knowing that BHS and all those behind the scenes making this possible are in service with a grateful heart. And we release this prayer knowing as it is spoken, it is done. And we are one united in loving and in caring 
and in changing the world to a higher place of living. And so it is. And so it is, Joanne. Thank you for praying us in. I just want to take a minute to welcome you in as our new spiritual director. Thank, Thank you, for, you for filling in that vacant spot. We had our vice president, Kevin Lockwood, stepping in temporarily, and it's nice to have you. Thank you. You're I love, welcome. I love this group. I've known BHS for 15 years. Yeah. Well, we're grateful to have you. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the Interactive Business Networking Group directly following this broadcast. Okay. Okay. Bye. Peace. Peace. My name is Anthony Pritchard, and I'm the meeting planner here at BHS. Um, we like to start out by conducting a little prayer and telling you more about who we are. BHS is... Uh, a, a spiritual business community where we empower business professionals to be successful through education, connection, and spiritual principles. And um, now that we've gone from the physical meeting to the virtual space, we've realized that there's actually more to do, <laughs> uh, more to do with our personal and professional development into the soft skills that we um, hold with us as business people and with the technology that we're adapting. So if you're a business professional that values spiritual principles, we invite you to join us. And if you're interested in participating in a bigger role, we definitely have um, some things that we could use help with in our board of directors. So reach out to us after this um, short one hour business networking event and see how you can apply your specific skills to our group and our community here. Um, joining us today is our speaker, Gene Maxwell. He is a self-defined reformed psychotherapist. He has practiced applied leadership transformation for the past 25 years using his human potential model to train, coach, mentor, and consult the business leaders around the world. Gene started his career training psychiatrists, uh, psychologists, and a social worker how to cure psychopathologies. He's consulted to the tough rooms of state and federal prisons and mental hospitals. Gene has helped individuals, teams, and organizations increase effectiveness and profitability through accountability, empowerment, relationship, productivity, and trust. He brings a unique blend of psychological insight and business acumen. Integrating inspiration with practical human tools, he served as an adjunct professor at the University of Phoenix, Tulane School of Social Work, and Auburn University. He is a resource to the Institute of Public Administration and Management in the Republic of Singapore. He's been a Vistage chair for over 22 years. Today, his topic is emotional balance. Please help me welcome Gene Maxwell. Hi, Gene. Good morning. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you very much for that introduction. And Joanna, thank you very much for that wonderful prayer. I'm uh, uh, mostly thinking about uh, the piece of it, From the Darkness to the Light. This uh, original title of this presentation planned sometime last year, uh, has been modified a bit. It was originally called balance work. Uh, I decided that in light of our current circumstances, we probably warranted a, a closer look at some of the 
topical things that are going on in our lives today and possibly some ways of thinking about and looking at it and dealing with them. Uh, so today our focus will be on the human survival need for emotional balance. And when I say a survival need, I mean that it is as important as food and water, air and space, temperature control, elimination, rest, and all those other things that keep us alive. And I think, and, and it is my belief, and I hope to present you with a few facts, uh, that we are in an emotional balance pandemic as well. Our current mental health crisis is of growing concern to businesses and to the leadership community that I serve. Not just a viral pandemic, but a mental health pandemic. There's an ancient Chinese curse that says, may you live your life in interesting times. And if any of you are not living in interesting times now, I am suspect that, that uh, you haven't opened your window and looked out uh, any time recently. We are in the midst of a global pandemic, an economic downturn, uh, and a national protest accompanied with rioting and looting. It is little wonder that it is called by many a perfect storm. I'm going to read you a few statistics. I have not memorized these. These are uh, as late as uh, 1030 last night, nearly. Uh, Pre-COVID, I, I want to go back in history a little bit. Pre-COVID, nearly one in five U.S. adults live with a mental illness. That's 46.6 million uh, people. This is, uh, this is from 2017. Mental illness may include uh, many different conditions in varying degrees uh, from mild to severe. Of those... Uh, uh, there's a higher percentage of women, 22.3% as opposed to men. Young adults, young adults were 25% uh, of that population. Suicide was the 10th leading cause of death in the United States, claiming lives of over 47,000 people. 47,000. Suicide was the second leading cause of death among individuals between the ages of 10 and 34. 10 and 34. There were also twice as many suicides in the United States in 2018 as there were homicides. Twice as many. Now let's let's move to to the COVID pandemic. All mental health disorders are worsening including anxiety and depression, according to the Mayo Clinic. More than half Americans are suffering mental health issues, new polls show in regard to Forbes articles. Now, that's 50% uh, uh, of all of us. During March 2020, the disaster helpline saw 338% increase in call volume, 330%. We do not have current figures on the increase of, of suicides, but know uh, that they are significantly higher than the earlier percentage of this that I gave you. The American Addiction Survey says that the following, 87% of people have said they are more likely to use alcohol heavily during this time, some admitting uh, using it while working from home. Also, 65% of people who are unemployed are more likely to resort to drug use and 50% more likely to become dependent. So we already had a dependency issue prior to this and it, it is doubling uh, on, on a regular basis. COVID-19 could lead to 75,000 deaths from drug and alcohol abuse and suicide, new research suggests. Deaths from these causes are known as deaths of despair. There is, there is a despair in this nation that is pandemic, and it may accelerate uh, uh, the conditions leading to the physical deaths. Deaths of despair are tied to multiple factors. Prior to COVID, 
pandemic, there were already unprecedented num numbers, uh, according to the Wellbeing Trust in Oakland. And the beat goes on. There is no question that the pandemic is challenging the emotional well-being of the vast majority of us. Let's bring it a little closer to home. When I read these sort of statistics that are presented to me, my first reaction is that they're about someone else, not me. That 50% is, is somebody else. It's like the old story about the difference between a re recession and a depression. A recession is when someone else loses their job. A depression is when I lose my job. All mental health starts with me. Emotional balance is the key to understanding. As a therapist often say, awareness is the first issue. It's not the feelings that I know that I have that cause the problems in my life. It's the ones that are buried or denied that cause the troubles. Now there, there is one way of making the invisible visible with emotional about with an emotional balance survey. And this is how I propose we spend some of our time today. I'll tell you a little bit about how it works. When COVID first started with with my Vistage group, we immediately went to uh, virtual meetings, virtual speakers, and pretty much virtual everything. And uh, as a result of what was going on, we started having regular Wednesday meetings for an hour and a half as a, in addition to our full day, third Wednesday of every month. What I noticed in those early early meetings were there were a lot of facts, there were a lot of uh, things going on, and people being prepared and, and doing that piece of it. But there was a flatness in what was happening, and what I started to see was that my members were not emotionally connected to themselves in any kind of meaningful ways, except through stories uh, that had uh, very little to do with much of reality, but a lot of dire prediction and, and uh, what I call the sky is falling uh, kinds of conversations. And so I decided that it was time for us to have a look at where we were in regard to our an emotional set. And this exercise that I'm getting ready to propose to you came out of that work. My members, once they started doing this, started getting more balanced, more centered, and, and more in line with being able to figure out what, what to do. And I'm, I'm very happy to, to report that they are all in good health and, and shape in regard to each of their individual businesses, their themselves, their families, and their employees. So here's how it works. There are, there are five silos of emotion. Fear, anger, sorrow, excitement, joy, appreciation. Each of them are experienced at different levels at different times each different levels at different times. For example, anger may be a two as experienced in irritation, like when I put my mask on to go into the grocery store. I'm, I'm working on not becoming immediately irritated because I'm having trouble breathing. Uh, although it also uh, may be experienced at a nine level in terms of rage uh, at, at something uh, that is going on. Fear may be experienced as a three as being somewhat concerned or as ter at a 10 as being terrified in relation to some survival threat or need. All the silos are experienced at different levels, every, every single one of them. The purpose of an evaluation is to allow you to get a snapshot of your current emotional balance. Now you're gonna need a pen or a pencil on a piece of paper for for doing the rest of what I what I propose for you to do. At the end of the survey, I'll ask you 
uh, for a future emotional balance plan. I'll explain each of the questions and use myself an ex uh, as an example, and I'll give you a little time to do your own. So this is your own self-survey. Um, I'm going to ask you to rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. 1 to 10. Now, some have asked me, is this a snapshot of where I am right now, or is it over the last week about uh, how, how I've been doing? Either one will serve fine. Your, your, your choice in how you decide to do this. Let's start with fear. Fear is a feeling that I have when I am in physical or emotional danger. If the saber-toothed tiger comes through the door, uh, as an example of that. <laughs> now, my response is going to be automatic in, in that case. I, there is no thinking. It is a definite stimulus response of fight, flight, freeze, appease uh, response to these kind of things. The other part of fear is when I do not have sufficient or good enough information to make good decisions. And I will submit to you uh, that in business, that has been more of the norm uh, today, uh, trying to siphon out what is real and what is fact and what is fiction. So uh, give yourself a fear rating. I'm going to give myself a three. Uh, I'm not particularly concerned or worried in regard to myself or, or my own. I know that... Uh, Marilyn and I are taking good care of ourselves and following guidelines and doing what we need to do. I do have concern for family and friends and others who are on the front lines of, of this pandemic. I'll give you a couple of things and put down a couple of notes about, as, as I did, about your own reasoning in regard to each of these emotional sets. Anger is a feeling that I have when I'm not getting what I need. That's a bi biological survival, food and water, air and space, temperature control, rest, elimination, exercise. And the last of those, the hidden one, is human touch, human strokes, of which we are all in some level of deprivation. Or... Uh, uh, I'm not getting what I want. Now that's unlimited, as any healthy two-year-old will demonstrate. I want what I want when I want it. So uh, for me, my anger level is probably around a two or so, just in terms of frustrations. Uh, I do turn my television off. Uh, because I find that uh, it is a stimulus response reaction to a higher level of frustration uh, or, or so. So uh, that's where I'm at in the, in the anger silo. Uh, take a second to, to take a peek at that one for yourself and, and write down, again, your score for yourself. Sorrow is my least favorite of these because it's the one that I am, it is what I have when I'm turning loose of or saying goodbye to something of value, meaning, or importance to me. And at a 10 level, it can be deep level grief in the loss of a loved one, or it can be something uh, smaller than that. Uh, my sorrow level is probably... And it's not probably, it is uh, somewhere between a six and a seven. In terms of the pain that I know that other, others are suffering and my inability to know direct ways of being able to help, being deeply saddened by some of the things that I'm experiencing uh, in, in the course of my life today. Now, let me say something about these first three in the silo. These, these three emotions do not store well. 
They do not save up very well like an avocado or an egg. If I save an avocado too long, it does not make very good guacamole or an egg, very good egg sandwich. They need to be brought into the light of day and find some place of action or use. All of these emotions are energy sources for doing something meaningful when used in healthy ways. Excitement. I am excited. I am, uh, I experience, so excitement is an emotion uh, that I experience with heightened states of energy, enthusiasm, eagerness, and a current experience that anticipates a positive future. And I am in anticipation of very positive futures for all of us going forward. I will put myself at an eight in terms of excitement. Rate yourself, put a couple of notes. And finally, joy, appreciation. It's an emotion we feel when we're getting what we want or need. It is a recognition of our life's blessings. Now, if I started right now to share with you all of the appreciations of my life, this dialogue would go on for a long, long time, probably 24 hours, and I wouldn't run out of things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for an eight, eight to a nine or so with that. So finally, uh, give yourself a score there, a couple of notes, and now, right now, from the understanding of what you've what you've written down in your own in your own uh, piece of this, your own survey, uh, what your focus going forward will be some small action focus over the next twenty four to forty eight hours. So. I'm going to continue, mine is, I'm going to continue to challenge my Vistage group to use their emotional balance as part of their key indicators going forward. And I plan on having that discussion with them in our next meeting on next Wednesday. Okay, take a couple of minutes to finish up. And when you finish, it will be time to break into discussion groups to share your discovery and learning. Now this, everything that you've just done is best anchored in sharing. So uh, I hope that all of you will, will stay around for this breakout and sharing. At the end of the time, I'll be available for questions and answers for anyone who would like to participate. Please enjoy one another. Thanks for that great presentation, Jean. <clears throat> I put your email and phone number up on the screen for anybody that uh, has a question for you directly. But now I'd like to direct everyone to our Zoom meeting, which I will be placing in the comments as well. So all you should have to do is click on that Zoom link, and we will see you over there in the other interactive portion of this call. Uh, next week, we've got Aaron Fall Haskell. And the top 10 things that you can do to get more engagement on social media. So I also invite you to join us in two weeks. Same time, same place. Thank <laughs> you.